everyone welcome in today's video in today's video i'm going to show you how i paint my sculptures with mica powders and pastel powders i hope you enjoy so in today's video i'm going to show you how i painted this sculpture with mica powders and pastel powders i would have painted this piece with acrylics alone but due to this piece having very soft pastel light colors and lots of gradations I thought working with powders was the best options because with the powders you can get these beautiful soft gradations and you can build your color slowly so with very light colors that's a very good thing because then you can tell when you have to quit with acrylics they usually dry up a lot darker so I'll quickly give you an overview of the materials that I've used to paint the sculpture. Um, bef before you start painting, it's wise to use a, a gesso or a primer for the first base coat. Uh, this will make sure that your paint won't peel off later and that it will grab onto the surface. Because most polymer clays, they don't adhere, at least the paint won't adhere well to most polymer clays. So first layer gesso is pretty much always essential. Um, once the gesso is dry, you can start painting with acrylics. But in this case, I've been using uh, mica powders, uh, mostly from Pearl X. I just love this stuff. It's so pretty. Um, basically what it is, it's just dry. Uh, powder with mica particles in it so it will uh, refract light and it's all shiny and sparkly pretty cool um, and then of course I've used grinded pastel powder you can easily make this yourself by just simply grinding your pastel sticks soft pastel or hard pastel it doesn't really matter and for these I just used old bead cases, you can throw them away, but I find them very handy to make uh, puzzle dust in them and store that in there. Um, I've also used acrylic paints only a wee bit on the ears and for smaller details and a bit of acrylic ink. And when you're totally done with painting oh before that it's handy in between each layer of uh, dusting pastel or micas you have to seal it with a acrylic varnish you can also use fixative but i find this works better because with uh, pastel fixatives sometimes it still gives off after a spray so i prefer to use this um, in between each layer and at the very end, I give it another coat of varnish. Uh, in this case, I just used a satin varnish to get a, a subtle, uh, shiny coat on the sculpture. Um, I just used one, one layer because I already had a lot of uh, varnish on it. But yeah, this just seals the whole thing off and makes sure that the paint won't come off easily like with damage or anything also it will protect against UV light um, yeah. Oh, yeah and about brushes very important brushes I use brushes to dust the powders on but it's important to use very cheap brushes like those that come in a pack for a euro or whatever um, because of one reason it will kill and destroy your brushes terribly in one go even so yeah you don't want your very expensive brushes to look like this so yeah I advise to use very cheap brushes for this still the uh, the outcome will be still as good as you would use expensive brushes so cheap brushes um, so yeah that's it uh, let's move on to the video before I add color, I first give the sculpture a base coat with Liquitex Gesso. 
I chose to go with a white base color, but, but if you prefer, you can use black or transparent gesso as well. I went with white because I'll be working with very soft and light colors. With a white base, the colors will be soft yet vibrant. If you use a dark base color, you will get a much darker effect, since most of the powders are not opaque. Also, the mica powders tend to look different depending on what base color you use, especially the dual toned ones. I usually apply two to three coats of gesso before I start to paint. I am not gonna lie, painting or rather dusting your sculptures is going to be very time consuming. Because the powders are quite transparent, you will need to build your colors in layers. In between each layer, you will have to seal them down with a varnish or fixative spray. Don't use varnish you have to brush on, because then you will have the powder particles move around and it will look like acrylic paint. With sprays, the powder stays in place but is sealed, so after your varnish coat is dry, you can apply the next powder coat. With each new layer, layer, you will notice that the color darkens and becomes more vibrant. Um, how many layers you need depends on how dark or rich you want your colors to be. For Luffy's blue coat, I only needed four coats using two different blues. Pearl X Sky Blue for the first two and Sapphire for the last two. After four coats of mica powder, he has a nice light blue pearly coat. I prefer to use mica powders on sculptures that have fur texture because the shimmery micas create the illusion that the sculpture has this lifelike shiny healthy fur coat. It also gives your piece more depth and makes it look more dynamic. Even when I work with acrylics mainly on the sculpt, I like to use mica powder on the last layer to breathe extra life in a piece. When dusting with powder pigment, some of the white markings got a bit lost, so I used a titanium white acrylic paint to bring back the white markings around the eyes, ears and nose, and a bit on the swirly bangs as well, as those will be done in a soft yellow later, so I had to remove some of the blue there, as otherwise they would have turned green if I started applying the yellow puzzle dust layers later. If your project has darker colors and you still need for a white base coat, you can reduce the amount of layers by starting the first 3 to 4 layers with pigment powder or pastel dust. You can even use Pond Pastel. I've tried it before and it works wonderfully, I have to say. These are more pigmented than mica powder, so building color goes a bit faster that way. Then the last couple of layers you can use mica powder to get the lively shimmery effect. Of course you can use acrylics to build your color up even faster, but I personally prefer to use pigmented powders because it gives me more control when I build up my color and often results in a more lively and dynamic result. Also with acrylics I find it harder to get softer edges and color transition. I only really like to use acrylics for small details or to quickly apply a base color to build further on. I have seen people use oil paint on sculptures before, so that is an option as well. For the soft yellow color on the belly and the legs I have used grinded ochre pastel powder. I only apply two layers to get this soft pastel yellow color. Then to pronounce the muscle tones on the blue part of the fur, I used a bit of grinded indigo blue pastel powder. Putting subtle darker colors in the shadow areas gives your piece even more depth and will add to the realism. Then to make the yellow part nice and shiny, I used Pearl X Interference Gold. One coat was enough to breathe some extra life into that color. So how does one make a pastel stick into a powder? This is quite easy. You can shave your pastel stick with an X-Acto knife. Just put your stick above your container and use the knife with the blade away from you to gently shave your stick and create powder. Lots of pastel artists use this to create sharp points on their hard pastels as well. 
You can also use pan pastel or pigmented powders. These will save your time as you don't have to grind them, but they are often more expensive. For the feet I used Pearl X Super Copper in two layers. This color is quite strong, so I did not need too many layers to get the color tone I was looking for. If you're wondering why I use a paper towel to hold my sculpture with, it's mainly because I want to reduce getting skin oil on the sculpture, and sometimes a sculpture becomes a bit sticky because of all the layers of spray varnish. Sometimes acrylic paints can make your sculpture go sticky too. Though using a final high quality brush on varnish, like the ones from Liquitex, will get rid of the sticky feel in the end. To add some subtle shading on the yellow bits, I used a bit of terracotta pastel powder. I really like the effect these subtle touches of shadows can give you. It can really bring out some of the details and it makes your piece look less flat. Basically your sculpture is like a 3D canvas. Even though the piece you paint is 3D, it will still look flat if you just throw one or two base colors on it. Just like a normal 2D painting would look flat this way. So take your time on a 3D piece and approach it like a normal painting. Put on a base coat, build up your base colors, create depth by adding shadows, empathize details and even create highlight with pearl metallic mediums. For the smaller purple details on the ears and on the face on the, and the pow pads, I used Liquitex Soft Body Dioxazine Purple as a base color and went over it with Schmincke Aero Color Silver Violet Acrylic Ink. This ink turns from silver to violet and I thought it would give these smaller areas a nice lively effect. These areas were too small to do successfully with mica powder. I am often asked how I make the eyes for my sculptures. I make molds from two-part epoxy silicone and push beads of various sizes in them and wait till the silicone is cured. This takes two to three minutes. Then I use clear two-part epoxy resin, which you have to mix together and then put the mixture in the molds and let it cure for a day. Then I just simply paint the backside of the resin domes with acrylic paint. If any of you are interested, I may consider making a video about it sometime. Then there was something I wanted to ask all of you, which is kind of off topic, but lately I got some comments that people hardly can hear my voice over. Most of these people use phones and tablets. Now I want to know if more of you experience this and if it has improved during this video as I tried to talk louder and adjusted the mic and record volume in the Windows Movie Maker. So has it improved? I can't tell because on my computer I can hear it fine. Also my apologies to the ones who had trouble hearing my voiceovers in previous videos. I'm not very savvy in these kind of things and I'm still learning. <laughs> so back on topic, in the final stage of the painting process I am applying a coat of Liquitex Satin Varnish. This varnish gives a subtle soft shine that is very similar to real fur coat shine and it protects your paint job from chipping off or rubbing damage. Also it protects your piece against UV light also, I found it reduces the stickiness some paints and spray varnishes create. I applied one layer, but if you want a stronger satin shine effect, you can apply more layers. And finally, I'm going to give him whiskers. It's a small detail, but surely it is the cherry on the cake. I use an old synthetic paintbrush, of which I cut some of the hairs off if a hair has splitted ends, I trim these off first. Then I dab the hair in some Fabri-Tac glue and glue it onto the sculpture. Fabri-Tac is a clear non-yellowing glue which is strongly adheres once dry. You will hardly see it on your project, which is one of the things I really like about this glue. It also dries really fast. If all the whiskers are glued on, I trim them in the right size. 
Also, I forgot to mention that I use a 3D glazing medium to make the eyes appear shiny and wet. So we have reached the end of the video. I hope it was fun and helpful and maybe inspires you to paint your own 3D projects. If you enjoyed the video, please leave me a like and subscribe to my channel if you don't want to miss out on any of my future videos, that is. Also, I'm always open for suggestions, so if you have one, leave it in the comment section. And of course, if you just want to say hi, then please do so. <laughs> Um, so, thank you all for watching, and hopefully the voiceover was better in this one, and I hope to see you all again in my next video. Have a good one!